What is up you guys? My name is Noah and this is Tech New. This is a follow-up video to my iPhone 5S late review that I uploaded last year. Before we start, I want to give a big thank you to anyone who has subscribed to this channel due to that very video. The funny thing is, is that when I uploaded that video, I had absolutely no expectations for it and thought no one would watch it. To my surprise, it blew up and has really made my channel what it is today. I hope that anyone who has been subscribed since then has noticed an increase in video quality as I have continuously been putting more and more effort into my videos and have learned and grown much as a content creator since then. So now, without further ado, let's get into my iPhone 5S Late Review V2. With the Apple event right around the corner, the good old iPhone 5S is about to be deemed technically obsolete. Now I will confirm that this is very untrue, but I say this because the 5S is about to be replaced by the 6 as the bottom tier free phone offered by carriers. Now I have owned my 5S a little over a year now, and I am happy to report that the phone has held its own and continues to service me exceptionally well. In this video, I'm going to answer the question that I answered in my last iteration of this review. And that question is, is the iPhone 5S still worth it now in 2016 and 2017? First off, let's do a quick rundown on the specs of this device. The 5S, as some of you may know, is rocking Apple's first generation 64-bit dual core mobile CPU, otherwise known as the Apple A7, which is clocked at 1.3 GHz. Along with that, it contains 1 GB of RAM, a 1570mAh battery, a 4-inch 1136x640 display, Touch ID first generation in the home button, an 8 megapixel rear shooter with a true tone flash, and lastly a VGA quality front facing camera. You can find this phone in 16, 32, and 64 gigabyte capacities, as well as in the space gray, silver, and the popular gold variant. I personally happen to own the 32 gig space gray model. There is something called the Five Pillars of Smartphones, which has been sort of invented or established by one of my favorite tech tubers, Marcus Brownlee or MKBHD. These five pillars include design, battery life, display, camera, and the performance of a particular smartphone. In this case, as you know, I'm going to be applying this to the 5S. So first, let's briefly talk about design. Now, this is entirely based on opinion, but I and many others still appreciate Apple's angular iPhone 4 and 5S design, which the iPhone SE has recently inherited. I do not find the phone uncomfortable to hold, as I do have a banged up OtterBox commuter series protecting it. However, my only complaint is that typing can occasionally be annoying, as the width of the screen is quite small, causing my big thumbs to tap on the wrong character. However, the device is very easy to handle, especially with one hand. If you prefer or need a phone with a smaller form factor, the 5S or SE are for you. Next up, let's talk about battery life. I'm not gonna lie to you, the 5S's battery is not something to brag about. Now, I do heavily use my phone, whether watching videos, surfing the web, scrolling through iFunny, or texting, and I would unscientifically guesstimate that I get about two hours of screen on time with this phone. Now, your mileage may vary, but it is a fact that this phone's battery is far from admirable. However, this flaw does not make the phone undesirable. In fact, the small battery capacity does have a strong point. Charging this phone up does not take very long at all. No, it's not anything close to fast charging technology, but the 5S charges fairly quickly, especially with an iPad charging brick. If you take a few phone calls, send a couple texts, and have overall light to medium usage on this phone, it should last you all day. However, if you're like me, I would recommend you charge twice a day and buy an external battery pack or two if you plan on traveling. Next up, we're going to talk about display, and this is the part I'm going to spend the least time on. The display on the iPhone 5S is sharp, colorful, vibrant, and fit for most users. As I said previously, the small screen may appeal to you as you can reach all four corners of the screen with one hand comfortably. I have had no issue with this display and if you buy this phone, you probably won't either. 
Next up is camera, and once again, I'm not going to spend too much time in this segment because this topic has already been beat to death tenfold. Simply put, the iPhone 5S has a pretty decent camera. I would say for most consumers, you can get more than adequate photos and videos from this phone. And if you have watched some of my previous videos, all of the footage within them has been shot with my own 5S. All in all, the 5S still holds up in the camera department. And lastly, what you've all been waiting for is my bit on performance. A few days ago, my friend Mahmoud from Fantasia Tech, who happens to own an iPhone 6 Plus, told me that he downloaded and installed the iOS 10 public beta version 7 on his phone, and said it was running really smoothly. I, who had been reluctant to updating my phone in fear of a massive loss in performance, began to ponder whether or not I should install the beta myself. Before attempting to, I installed the beta on my family's iPad Air first generation, which is essentially an iPhone 5S with a larger display, a bigger battery, a bigger chassis, and a slight increase in CPU clock speed. I downloaded the profile, then the update, and tapped accept and install. I crossed my fingers, and to my surprise, the iPad seemed to run just as well as it had with iOS 9. I then promptly installed the beta on my phone without hesitation. And these are my thoughts. iOS 10 actually feels faster than iOS 9. No joke, I kid you not, my iPhone feels quicker than it did before. And I believe this is due to faster animations and other improvements, especially on how apps load data. I notice very, very little to virtually no lag at all when using my phone for casual tasks such as surfing the web, texting, and even playing some light games. Animations that you would think to be laggy are not, such as the notification panel, control center panel, and the spotlight search animations. Apps open quickly, and overall the user experience is smooth and very pleasant, like my friend said. For a 3-year-old device, the iPhone 5S really holds its own, and I believe this is due to the 64-bit Apple A7 chip. So that is my second late review of the iPhone 5S. All in all, I highly recommend this phone to anyone on a budget in need of an iPhone. If this video helped you out, please smash that like button, comment if you have something to say or if you have any questions, and subscribe for more content like this. Stay tuned every Saturday and for my new weekly video series, Weekly Tech News in 99 Seconds. Each video is brief and outlines a week in the tech world, giving you the most relevant news in a very short amount of time, or as it says in the name, in 99 seconds. And other than that, I will catch you all in the next one. Peace.